excited for this week, you know, and then a uh, short week for us, but uh, looking forward to the matchup and, and getting up to Boise and, and playing in a very qual a quality team that's ranked. Um, I have a lot of respect for Coach Harson and that program and the coaches and the players and uh, have a great fan base. And so really looking forward to the game. Uh, we consider them a rival for us and, and uh, a game that's been consistent for us since I've been here as head coach. So uh, looking forward to the matchup and, and, and excited for the game on Friday. Okay, we're going to do Jason Shepard and then Tad Walsh. Kalani, you just mentioned, you know, playing Boise State with everything that would certainly appear to be on the line in this game. How do you guys view this matchup knowing that it could have pretty large implications in terms of postseason? All we care about is, is being at our best and seeing what happens afterwards. I mean, that's going to be the – that's been our focus this entire season. And uh, I know a lot of media members wanted to talk about this game last week or even two weeks ago. And so uh, we're just excited that the game's here. But our focus has been completely on the opponent that, uh, of the week and learning and, and getting better from the mistakes uh, from last week's game. So that that's our, our main focus. Nothing's going to change. Um, we've been on the road before. We've, we've – uh, I've been really pleased with the way our players have kept their focus and, and nothing's going to change that you know, with this week. We're not worried about anything other than being at our best and scouting, uh, you know, Boise State. That uh, seems like they've reloaded really well and, and they've, they have a, a, a lot of depth on their team, play tough brand of football, and they do a lot of different things on offense, defense, and special teams. So uh, it's going to take all of our, t our attention, but just like it's been every week, um, they're, they're a difficult uh, opponent, and, our, and uh, we respect them a lot. And part of that respect is making sure that we're ready and, and give them our best shot because we know we're going to get theirs. Hey, Kalani, how are you? It's it's been long. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's <laughs> been a while, yeah. Hey, it's good to see you. I, I've been wondering, uh, you know, two months into the season, two months since you unveiled the Love One Another t-shirts and messages, um, what the reaction has been from opponents, from ESPN, and, and what impact is that message having, not, not just on the team, more importantly, more broadly? I see the athletic department, Mark Pope was wearing one the other day, but even beyond, beyond BYU, uh, what, what impact is it having? I think it's having a very uh, positive impact. It's, it's um, you know, we, we, we're a religious-based institution and team, and so... Our players know what they represent here on and off the field, and uh, we're not perfect, but there's a, you know, loving one another doesn't take that much effort, just takes some focus. And so it goes in line with what we're trying to do as a football program, goes in line with our church, with our school and the mission of this program. So uh, it all makes sense. And, you know, we're promoting the words of Christ. And that's what uh, I think it's a, you know, it, it's it's really nice to unite around that and, and, and um been really proud of the players, the way they're playing the game with sportsmanship and and uh, trying to honor the game as much as possible. I think there's a way that you can play this game, uh, which is a physical, you know, uh, violent game, but have a, a, a good sense to it. I, I've seen it when, when I played for Lavelle Edwards and, and really proud of the way our guys have played this year so far. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go Jay Drew and then Chris Vanini. Kalani, uh, going back three years when you were recruiting Zach Wilson, obviously committed to Boise State, why, uh, why did you pursue him so hard? What, what did you see about him? What, why was it so important to get him in Provo? Uh, I knew he was a great player. I mean, that's like, <laughs> uh, that's, um, just, you just know that there's something about him. that I, I, There's something about him I really liked, and I've known him since he was a kid. So uh, I get to know these kids and see them and, and see them grow up and see them run their high school programs and um, see their families. And I know what families they come from. And so he, he has this, I found, I, I realized that he could be a great addition to what we do here. And um, it's really in line with what we do. And, you know, I, I like the way he was raised. And so um, it's probably why we signed his little brother too, a linebacker with Josh. And so just like good players with, with it with a background of toughness and a foundation of hard work. And that's what, that's what Zach gives us. And glad that he's part of our team and an honor for me to be his coach. Kalani, how much do you take out of last year's win? Obviously both teams had 
backup quarterbacks at the time. Um, you know, what, what do you take away from that uh, for this year, and maybe what do you not? Um, there's some carryover, but I think there's different there's different bodies on the field, different names, uh, and then there's you know I, the one thing I I I, uh, I noticed and you're watching Boise and being around them for so many years, and and this is Coach Harson to you know. He, he's just so detailed in that they basically put guys in there and it doesn't seem to have a lot of um, drop off. And so, um, you know, as you watch them, the replacements that they've had come in this year, uh, still not a lot of drop off from from from, uh, from last year. And uh, and then he does a great job at utilizing skill on, on all three phases, specifically on offense. I know they they spread their guys around and find different ways to get the get their playmakers the ball and and that's based around a, a, a solid foundation, which is the O line. We we feel like we, we try to do the same uh, same thing and similar things uh, the, to them, and so I think it'd be a great matchup. But a lot of respect for what he's been able to do as a head coach and what his uh, coaching staff's been able to do uh, reloading their players because it, it doesn't seem to miss a beat. Okay, let's go, Mitch Harper, and then Sean Walker. Yeah, Kalani, uh, Zach's talked in the past about how prove them wrong is kind of a mentality that he uses with his game. I'm, I'm curious, how would you describe Wilson's mentality and how he approaches the game and his mentality when he's on the field playing? Well, I think he, he always viewed himself as a, as a great quarterback, just needed everyone to see it. And I think that he had a lot of things in the way, um, specifically injuries and maybe a little bit of youth, right? But um, his mentality has always been um, – to, to compete and be the best that he can. And so he, he doesn't just rest. The guy gets better. Even if he's not able to throw, he finds a way to get his, his um, the mental part of this game strong. He's just a hard worker and then just never satisfied. And uh, when you have that, you know, under center he, or in the shotgun nowadays, uh, I mean, good things can happen for you. So I feel like we have a, a good number of players that, that are built the same way and, and, um, you know, they, they love what they do here, love what we represent, and love the way we play the, our brand of football. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to – there's a lot of things that Zach can still do that people haven't seen yet. So looking forward to seeing him do it. Coach, we talked after the game Saturday night about how this is a, a short week but an even shorter week because of Election Day and kind of the NCAA rules around that. Obviously, we know what you guys – can't do and Boise's in the same boat the whole country's in the same boat but can you give us a little bit of a walkthrough of kind of what you you guys have done on the staff to sort of emphasize election day educationally maybe helping players get registered that kind of thing are there things that you kind of have done maybe even outside of football to sort of emphasize that like this is the reason why the NCAA wants us to take it off yeah, it's, it's part of our, our mission as a team. It's part of what what we do is is uh, be involved with service and be involved with the, with the community. Um, that's, you know, not a lot of teams do. I mean, I, I'd say not a lot of teams. Teams try to do that and try to be out in the community. Um, but that's something that we really put out there in recruiting. That, that That's part of the, the job here. And, and if guys just want to play football and that's it, then that, that probably doesn't work for us. You know, we need them to be out there and be in the community, be with the fan base, appreciate the game and respect um, others as much as possible. And something beautiful happens when you're able to serve. And a good number of our guys are return missionaries and have served and have put, you know, put, put everything on, on hold to go and serve others. And just something beautiful happens when people serve. So I'm okay with the NCAA promoting a civic engagement, something that we are in, uh, definitely aligned with. And uh, we'll take advantage of it. I, I know people say, well, you, you guys can't do this and can't do that with a limited time. But uh, what we can do is uh, is embrace it and look at it as going into our eighth game, what, nine, nine, nine week season so far. Uh, we can look at it as, as a time to focus on other things and, and be well, well rounded when it's time, you know, when you're so, uh, so swallowed up with football, it's good to take a little break and uh, tomorrow will be a good one for them. So I, I think we're going to embrace everything about it and, and um, make the adjustments. I, I trust our coaches and our, our players to get the right scheme in place and make sure that we're ready to roll. We, so I, I think it's different for us. We're going into week game eight. And so I think this is the, the, the timing and the change will work in our benefit. All right, let's go. Jake Hatch and then Bob Bueller. 
Kalani, we saw Hank Bachmeyer play in the first game for Boise, and then we saw the Jack Sears this past weekend against Air Force. What's the challenge of preparing for both of those quarterbacks? Are they similar, or are they so different you have to prepare two different systems? They have four guys that can play quarterback, you know, and so I, I like that they have uh, guys that can play. They, um, You know, we see Cord and, and Finnegan out there as well. So um, I think uh, I, I kind of mentioned it earlier about Coach Harson and, and their offensive staff, and uh, I think they do a great job getting their guys ready. So um, we have to be ready for whoever shows up in that quarterback position. But um, whoever it is is going to be given the charge to, to try to run an efficient offense, and we're going to have to find ways to disrupt. It doesn't really matter who, who the quarterback's going to be, but I've been impressed with with um, you know with both Bachmeyer and Sears. I think they do a great job. Obviously, the what they've been able to do and, and score a lot of points, and and um, their their skill set is, is is impressive. So we'll have to be ready for all, you know both of them or or three or four of them if we have to. Coach, it's been a little over a year since you guys met uh, Boise State down in Provo last season. Where do you think you guys are the most improved? You know, as you look at this team versus the team that took the field that night, how would you compare the teams and, you know, where have you guys made your biggest strides? I feel like getting our guys back healthy. I mean, we've, we've been struck with the injury bug a little bit this year as well, but just the depth has been really good for us, knowing that we have more experienced guys and, uh, some veteran guys that, that are coming back. It, it's been it's been uh, it's been nice to have uh, a good number of O linemen that we know that can play because a lot of them have started and, and some of them start had their first start against Boise. So um, I think that's that's something that's different for us. But I, I look at Boise State; they're built the same way. You know, they they, they put in pieces. They're deep as well, and and uh, they're they're used to having success. And right now, is we I think this is a good, great matchup for us and. And uh, for them, it'd be it'd be a good a good good game. Looking forward to it. Okay, let's go, Ron Councilman BJ. Coach, uh, so kind of a two part question. Uh, Zach Wilson was a late addition to your recruiting class when when he when he committed to you guys. How big of a win was that for you guys in your in in, in the coach's office? And second part of the question was, what has been the most impressive part of his performance this season? Well, it was a huge win because, um, you know, we had believed in him when, when, when we were recruiting. I just, there's just something that you can just see in a kid um, in high school that you just know they have it. And so I think he had the, the it factor for me. And, and um, sometimes you just have this feeling in, in recruiting and coaching that, you know, you just got to go with a guy that, that you feel like is going to be able to make, make a, have a, a presence on the field. And, and sometimes it's not just seen on the highlight. There's a lot of variables that go into recruiting. And, um, you know, for us, it's a lot of sometimes it's development, but he's, it's his mentality that I really liked, you know, and his work ethic. And so that was huge for us. I mean, I, the, the game of recruiting gets, gets a little bit crazy because you, you have to, you know, guys recruit from other schools and they take from, from someone that was committed and things like that. But when it's all said and done, it's, it's, it, it's down to the kid and what he decides and his family decides the best for him. And uh, I think that in recruiting, the, the worst thing that could ever happen is someone goes to a school that they wish they would have been somewhere else. And so uh, my approach to recruiting sometimes is to, is to let the recruit and the family see that, uh, that, that what we're about and then let them make the best decision. The worst thing that could happen is someone come to BYU and wish they had gone to a different school. And um, that does us no good and does him no good. And so we're looking forward to and recruiting them, you know, making sure we filter out the guys that want to be here and, and the guys that we represent here and, and, and feel comfortable thriving and developing here in, the, in this environment. Coach, you look at the series with Boise State, obviously a lot of last second, uh, you know, finishes. The last two times you've been in Boise came down to the last play. Um, I know it's going to be a different atmosphere with no fans uh, on Friday night, but what just is your thoughts, I guess, on, on the battles you've had with them in recent years? And, and um, it's just, you know, probably expect nothing different on Friday night. The game up in and the games being up in Boise, is that what you're talking, referring to? Yeah, I mean, just the whole series, I guess, has had some great games, but in yeah. particular uh, up there, the last couple of years have come down to the last, the last play, the last two times you've been in Boise. Yeah, the cool thing, I mean, I, I, they have a great fan base, you know, and, and I had some really cool interactions with their fan base um, both both the times that we've been up there and, and so really impressed with them and, and the energy they bring to their team. So that, that, that was really impressive. 
you know, this, that it, it's what happens when you have an, like we, you know, we consider this a rival game for us. So, it, so it comes down to the wiring and gets close and there's a lot of emotions involved in it. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, you know, and, and we're, lo- we're looking forward to having, trying to find some success up there. But, uh, I think if we uh, show our best, we'll, we'll be able to live with whatever result happens. Thank you. Okay, Jared Lloyd, last question. Kalani, you've kind of touched on this, but how nice is it to have a game against a rival? No Utah this year, no Utah State. And, you know, a lot of the games got put together late against teams that you hadn't played before, and it was great to play the games. But how nice is it to be able to have a game against a team that you've faced and you guys respect each other and have this rivalry opportunity? Yeah, it's really nice. But, uh, you know, what? What? Um, just have from our team and our coaches and our fan bases – want to express appreciation and gratitude to to Boise State and to the Mountain West Conference for allowing us this this game to happen you know and and, and um there there are times that when we're trying to build this this uh schedule I know that when Tom was working through it that that uh we didn't know who was going to be out there and so it was nice to have Boise step up and and and, and get to make this game happen and to do it with their conference blessing so more than anything just a lot of gratitude and 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 um, appreciation that we have this opportunity to play this game and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it and see what happens. But regardless, just, there's a lot of respect between the, the two programs and the fan bases. And uh, just looking forward to the game. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, and um, I've been really pleased with, with with our team, but I've been really impressed with what I've seen from Boise. So looking forward to the preparation today and, and, and uh, making sure that we can you know be at our best because I know they will be at theirs. Okay, I'm going to ask for anyone that wants to do a follow-up. We can take like two or three of them. Uh, Mitch, I know you had your hand up and then put it down. So do you want to ask a question? Slash, are you there anymore? No? Okay, Jake Hatch, go ahead. And then Jake Edmonds. Yeah, Kalani, I just wanted more of a broad overview of what you see from Boise State going into this game through their first two games of the year. They put up a lot of points. And uh, the, the versatility of their offense is impressive. The fact that they can have... Uh, you know, different quarterbacks. It, it's it's consistent. That's what they've always been able to do. That that uh, doesn't doesn't matter the name of the quarterback. They they get in there. They're efficient, and it's based around the physical line, a run game that's really solid, and they can hurt you. And then uh, they have a lot of talent in the receiver receiving core and tight ends. And so, uh, really, really complete team on offense, on defense. They bring a lot of pressure. They do a lot of different looks, and they're physical up front as well front seven so a lot of success there I just don't um, the only thing that I could say is different is I haven't seen their field goal kicker kick a field goal yet because it's all been PATs and so that's that's a uh, that's really impressive you know and, and um, you know ho- hopefully uh, hopefully we don't have to see them out there on the field but but you know this is a this is a tough tough matchup for us and we're looking forward to, to the test I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for us. Hey, Coach, uh, I've been multitasking, so I apologize if this has already been asked, but um, do you have an update on Zane Anderson, uh, his status? Oh, yeah, Zane is a, a game-time decision. Um, we're, we're hoping – so he's not out for this week, so we're hoping to see a lot of improvement in the next couple of days. Um, he's played a lot of football for us, and so it's just a matter of does he have enough uh, practice time this week uh, for what we're going to see, uh, you know, and then can he perform. But – uh, we're going to trust him and, and athletic training room to, to get him ready. And, and then that decision will be made on the field at, at, up in Boise. Okay, let's go wrong counts and then uh, Tad Walsh. Coach, uh, the last time you guys played in the Albertson Stadium, uh, Zach Wilson got stopped short of the goal line on fourth down in, in a close loss. Have you guys talked about that moment at all? And, and is he the kind of player that kind of draws on that for motivation? I think he draws on a lot of things for motivation. You know, just knowing him and the way he operates, um, you know, right after the games, he's always looking for ways to improve and things that he made mistakes on. So I think that's something that's been on his mind, but I don't know if it's been on his mind recently, but I think he was a true freshman that year, you know, so it was a, it was a really good game. Just didn't work out in our favor, you know, and, and, um, uh, I think the the year before, I mean, the time before was a field goal that that didn't go our way either. So um, we're just going to keep playing and and, and 
put ourselves in a position to, to have success and hopefully uh, things will go our way. But I, I think, I think uh, we, we learn from a lot of things. We learn from success. We learn from failure as well. So, uh, you know, hopefully we, we've learned quite enough to get us, a, I guess, a better showing up in Boise. Thank you. Hey, Kalani, uh, on the, back on the T-shirts again, what does it mean to you that the proceeds of the sales are going to scholarships with the multicultural uh, office? Yeah, that, that, I'm just glad that, that people are taking care of each other. And that's the, so I said, you know, I, I think giving, giving opportunities to um, others is, is, is a big part of, of um, what our faith is about. And not just us, but it's promoting, there's a lot of Christians out there, a lot of good people out there that aren't even religious that are interested in helping people. So anytime we can help others, that's, that's one thing that you can't go wrong with is, is having the mindset of helping others and, and glad that we have a lot of people, specifically our fan base that would uh, buy those shirts and have the proceeds go to, to helping people that are, that are um, in need of, of scholarship money in need of that education. So thank you for everyone that has been able to do that and, and help our, our uh, multicultural um, students.